Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm doing another cook with me video bringing you into my kitchen on a day when I'm making a Valentine's Day meal. So I'm going to be making a Valentine's Day dinner and then also a Valentine's Day treat. This is actually a treat from the Nourishing Traditions cookbook and it turned out really good. And so um, let's go ahead and jump right in. I hope that you enjoy. So in reality, on this day, I made the dessert earlier in the day, and then the dinner ended up being a really fast and easy dinner. It's one of my favorite things to do when everything's high quality and from scratch and healthy, and, but doesn't take a lot of time. It's a really fast, easy, simple dinner. So I'm doing steaks. These I believe are ribeye, if I'm remembering correctly. Our cat is very interested. <laughs> But I'm just putting them in my cast iron skillet on the stove top, seasoning both sides with a little salt and pepper. And then I try to get a nice cooked crispy outer edge and then leave the inside a little bit like medium rare or so is usually my goal while I'm cooking these. So that's what we're doing for dinner is these steaks. I'll let them go until I like the look of one side. I don't really time them anymore. I did in the beginning, but these days I just watch them. And when I like the look of one side, then I go ahead and flip them and do the other side. Meanwhile, I'm gonna also work on some sides. So a really fast and easy side that we like to do that goes nicely with steak is potatoes fried in tallow. So of course you can do these a variety of ways. You can fry them in a cast iron skillet on the stovetop. You can do them in the oven in some tallow on like a flat sheet pan, or I'm doing them in my deep fat fryer that I have filled with tallow. So if you were with me in one of my other videos recently, I talked about this new, bigger, all stainless steel deep fat fryer that I have that I've been really happy with. And I'll link that down below in case you're looking for something similar, but I really like it because it doesn't have any nonstick coating or anything in it. And it has a really big capacity so you can easily fry a big batch of something at once. So that's one of my sides is just slicing up these potatoes with a crinkle cutter and then I will fry them in the tallow in the deep fat fryer. And then for the other side, I'm going to be getting some green beans going. And again, very fast and simple and easy. I just saute these in some butter in another cast iron skillet, stir them around a little bit and before you know it, they're done. So like I said, this is one of my favorite really fast and easy, simple dinners that is just so, so fast and easy to throw together, but it doesn't compromise. You're still making everything from scratch. It's all high quality, but you spent very little time in the kitchen. After about 10 to 15 minutes, I think I did like 12 minutes on these. It just depends on how thick they're sliced. Then they're ready to come out and I just put them, I set them to drain a little bit and then put them in a bowl, sprinkle some salt on, and then we are ready to serve everything else up too. So I like to take the steaks out of the pan and just let them rest on a plate for a little bit before serving. And then we have green beans that are ready they're really delicious cooked in butter. And then for our fermented food, we're having some sauerkraut. So that is our super easy, but really delicious Valentine's Day dinner. And then for our Valentine's Day dessert, like I said, I'm doing a recipe from Nourishing Traditions. This is in the dessert section, sweets for kids of all ages. This recipe is on page 549 and it's almond bars. So this was a really fun recipe. I first started with the flaky pie crust recipe from page 557, and then uh, just followed the recipe that way. So I'm for the flour, what I like to do whenever we're doing flour that's not soured or soaked or anything is to use white flour that's einkorn, white flour. 
So that way the bran has been removed and all that. And so I'm just starting with that. So to make the flaky pie crust, the recipe calls for one and a third cups of unbleached white flour. So I'm using one and a third cups of the einkorn white flour and then a pinch of sea salt. And it calls for a pinch of stevia powder, but I don't generally use that and I don't have any. So I just left that out. I don't feel like I need my pie crusts sweetened anyway in general so we were good with that and then i'm adding a very cold half a cup of butter and then chopping that up and adding it and then pulsing it in the food processor until it's the size of like large peas or so and then we're going ahead and adding a couple other things so it calls for some ice water so i have that ready and then two egg yolks that I beat with a fork and then I just drizzle those in there and then turn it on and pulse it just a couple times and I have my water ready. And then um, once that egg yolk is pulsed a couple times then I go ahead and turn the food processor on, add three rounded tablespoons of cold water and then as soon as it's pulsed together, I just turn it off. You don't wanna over mix it at all. And then the recipe calls for letting it chill for a while but I didn't have time to do that and it still turned out really good so I just put it straight from the food processor into the pan and then pressed it in there to shape it and to fill and cover the bottom of the pan so it's a 9 by 13 glass baking dish and I tried to do like a little raised crust around the edge too. And then once I have it all spread in the pan like that then I just poke it really well with a fork. And then the instructions say to put it into an oven that is not heated up, so not preheated, and then put it in the oven, turn on the oven to 300 degrees and bake for about 20 minutes. And then once that comes out of the oven, you let it cool. Once the crust is cool, I'm gonna go ahead and put a layer of jam. So the recipe calls for naturally sweetened raspberry jam. I couldn't find that at the store, so this is like a mixed berry that's naturally sweetened, so it has no sugar added to it. It's just fruit and pectin, and so it's really delicious. So we're just, uh, the recipe calls for one cup of naturally sweetened jam, and so this is about one cup, and so we're just putting the whole jar on there and then spreading it all around on the crust. And then I'm putting one cup of maple syrup and one tablespoon of arrowroot powder into a saucepan on the stove, mixing that together really well and bringing it to a boil. And then once it has come to a boil, I'm going to go ahead and stir in some slivered almonds. So the best thing is to use crispy almonds that you've soaked or sprouted and then dehydrated in the oven and then sliced. So I just stir those in. Once they're all coated nicely, then I just pour those over top of the jam and spread them around into an even layer. And then once those almonds are on there, the almond maple syrup and arrowroot mixture is on there, then this is gonna go into a 325 degree oven, so preheated this time. And I'm gonna let it bake for about 30 minutes or until the almonds become nicely browned. And then after that bake time is complete, then it comes out of the oven. And then the instructions say to let it cool slightly before you slice it into bars so that it's easier to cut. And then let it cool completely before removing the bars from the pan. We really enjoyed these almond bars. It was a really fun, tasty treat and it was pretty easy to make too. And they worked great for a fun, kind of festive Valentine's Day treat for today. So I hope that you enjoyed coming along and seeing what we made for a Valentine's Day dinner and dessert. Again, that recipe for the almond bars is on page 549 of the Nourishing Traditions cookbook. And I will have that cookbook linked down below in case you don't have your, uh, your own copy yet. I'm also going to link to Sally Fallon's blog because that's a really great informative thing to read. Anyway, I hope that you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day and I'd love to hear what foods you're making to celebrate down in the comments if you'd like to share. It's always fun to hear what other people are doing and if you have any easy meals that don't compromise on health but are still fast and easy, I'd love to share what your favorites are. So like I said, check out that description box for those links that I mentioned. I also have free ebooks and other goodies. I have meal plans. 
If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would enjoy it. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.